now we will have uh, Mr. Amit Bhattacharya. Yes. Uh, from Square Oracle. And he will be talking about the histograms and the, the way we use it in the Maya Sure. We are almost there. Yes. <laughs> okay. Took a lot of time. <laughs> okay. Ah. Okay. Hi. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. So, uh, I'm Amit. I work with the. Oops. Okay. Hmm. Is it? <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. okay. Okay. You're done, Amit. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. <coughs> yeah. No, it's fine. So I work with the uh, MySQL team here uh, in Bangalore, India, and um, so I've been with the team for the last six years. So before I start the presentation on histograms, I would like to know like how many of not my colleagues, how many of you guys have used MySQL? And, oh, great. How many of you have faced problems in performance of queries, getting slow? And uh, yeah, it's a common problem, right? <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> how many of you have heard about histograms as such uh, during your college or school days? It's a, it's a way, it's a statistical way of collecting data and using it to plot uh, bars and graphs like that. So yes, so so this is one of the new feature uh, which went in MySQL 8.0, and uh, so apart. So uh, what I'll do is I'll scan through this feature as well as I'll I can take up questions at the end related to uh, uh, like how query a query gets executed, what are the things you're going to look for in uh, in MySQL while <coughs> analyzing a query, stuff like that. So yeah, so. Uh, so example, I'll show you two slides. And so if you look at these slides, this is an explain plan uh, for a MySQL query. So it basically says it, it's, a it's a join of two tables, and there are certain filtering columns in it. And if you see the two slides, you will see certain differences over here. So that's the number of rows that <coughs> gets filtered out. And you see that when in, in the normal query, uh, the number of rows are more, and when we do a little bit of optimization as a DBA or as a user by giving a join order hint, so basically what we are doing here is we are changing the order of the joins here. So what you see is that MySQL optimizer is going to generate an explain plan, and the explain plan might change over a period of time based on certain factors, maybe the new uh, I mean, a lot of more rows have been inserted into the table, or you might not have updated the statistics after uh, your uh, inserts updates. So all those things. So what I'm trying to focus here is that at certain times, you might not get the optimal plan for a particular query. And the reason behind that is this. The bad estimation about the number of rows in the table incorrect information about the number of distinct values in the table. Now, this is one of the most important statistics that goes into the generation of a query plan in the optimizer. And if the statistics is not uh, perfect, then it can result in a, a bad query plan. The other point is about the data distribution of uh, a data distribution in a column of a table. So. There are cases where we have seen a lot of null values inside a particular column, and the data is heavily skewed. So you might have, like, say, 80% of uh, values of a particular table with a certain distinct value, and the remaining values are scattered all over. So because of that, also, the optimizer can generate a non-optimal plan, I would say. I would not say a bad plan, but a non-optimal plan. So. So, so, so here is the use case, a very nice use case. So 
assume that we have a table where we have a time column and this time column would basically mean the time that person wakes up in the morning so if you if you if you just think about the values that will go over here it can range from let's say 6 5 am 4 am to maybe 8 or 9 am in the morning if a person is not working in a night shift and he sleeps at like say 12 o'clock so but but here in this column the data would be heavily skewed uh, for a particular value so we need a solution in optimizer which would help us use certain statistics from a table which is uh, from a column which is heavily skewed and that's where the histograms comes into picture so so the histogram basically takes the information about the value distribution of a column it will calculate the frequency of each column into groups known as buckets and right now we support a maximum of 1024 buckets and you can you, so so while creating the histogram you don't need to take all the data which is there in the column you can probably do a sampling based on available memory you, that you have and you can take a random sample so even this factor is configurable uh, in your use and there are two types of histogram one is the singleton value wherein you have let's say you have a column which uh, talks about the gender of a person so that will have a male and a female and maybe okay what happened okay maybe some other genders but uh, so so basically two three four values so in that case you can have one value per bucket in the uh, for the for that particular column and there can be uh, scenarios wherein the number of values would be more than number of distinct values will be more than 1024 so in that case you use something called as a equi height histograms but this you don't have to configure it yourself based on the number of buckets that you define it's going to automatically generate these types of histograms so yeah so this is the uh, this is how a singleton histogram is like look uh, is, is going to look it's uh, it will have each a, a, a value will be there for each bucket and it will have the cumulative frequency of these values and this is basically used when you have a equality or a range predicate or a range filter predicate in your query so this is going to be helpful in this case uh, this particular case and this is a this is a pictorial representation of a equihight histogram so basically it's so you you won't see the values are not split so the values are decided based on the distribution that you have so if you have like say less values in this category then so you will fit in 7 to 10 range of values in the in, under this category it, it also has the same stuff it has a minimum value the maximum value the cumulative frequency and the number of distinct values for each column and it is best suited for the range kind of queries that you have yeah so this is how you are going to define a histogram you will have to uh, specify the column and the number of buckets that you have uh, this is how you are going to drop a histogram in case you don't need it and this is the this is the configurable parameter which basically tells you what is the amount of sample that you're going to use so this is in bytes and uh, so so the, yeah so the, the, there, is, there are storage engines api for sampling which will basically do a full table scan uh, when you are doing a sample so yeah so so histograms are stored as uh, json values uh, in the data dictionary uh, so and uh, it can be queried by, uh, from the information schema table that you have so basically you can query what what is the uh, how does the histogram look okay this is jumbled up yeah so basically it will look something like this so if you have values it will show you the cumulative frequencies of these values but this is mostly the metadata that you are going to get so what i'll do is i'll skip the few slides and i'll come to this so this is this is a very important slide so this is how the optimizer finds out how many records uh, are going to be filtered out of a particular condition you have something like a condition filter effect so what is this so this this is go this is an estimation that is going that is achieved 
because of the kind of filter predicates that you have. So MySQL optimizer uses something called as a guess estimate on columns which does not have index. So based on the predicates that you have, it is going to generate, uh, I mean it is going to use one of these values to estimate certain statistics that it's going to get and use it for the query plan. So if you see this query, you would see that there are some predicates over here, which so there's an equality predicate, there's a range predicate over here, and there's a between predicate over here, and that's a range. So what happens is, so before the use of histograms, what it will do is it will use these predicates as an, uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a filtering out, as a statistics to filter out how many uh, rows are going to be read from the table. So, so that's something called as the condition filtering effect. So basically it multiplies all these values and comes to a conclusion saying that this is the factor that it's going to use. Now what happens is, at so this is pure guess estimate. We call it as something called as guess estimate based on these values. Now what will happen is if the actual number of rows that qualifies are more or less than that, then this is not going to generate an optimal plan. With histogram, what will happen is you would get the frequency of the data distribution, you would get the frequency of the values age greater than 1 and this gives you a better kind of a statistics while generating the query plan. So that's so this is something internal which the optimizer does. I have just put it to show you like how the calculations are done in the optimizer. So, okay. So what we do is we do a lot of uh, performance tests with certain uh, benchmarks. So this is one of the benchmark, we call it as a DBT3 query. And it's, it's so this, this schema would look familiar to you. This is something like a TPCH kind of a schema that we use. So here you, we have two columns which does not have a index. And we basically create histogram on these two columns. So if I have to pictorially represent the query execution plan, you would see that the join order starts from supplier line item orders nation uh, customers nation and nation 2 without histogram the so what happens is the nation 1 and nation 2 tables are scattered apart and the, the execution happens from left to right and you see the number of rows that gets qualified over here are less now with histogram what will happen is if you have histogram on the nation table then the statistics that it gets generated and the filtering happens over here and you see the number of rows that qualifies as less. So basically what will happen is the cost of all these operations are less right now with histograms and this basically translates into a better performing query. So without histogram it used to take around 1.7 seconds and now it is like 1.335 seconds but it again depends on the volume of data that you have. So very important when you are going to use it. You are going to use it on a column where you don't want to create an index. So if the column is a part of your query and you don't want to create an index on the column, then histogram is going to help you out over here. This is, an, this is a one-time operation that you do, so basically what you do is you create a histogram out of it. Uh, when you're creating a histogram, you sample an amount of data, and that amount of data is sampled and all the values are stored in the metadata tables. But the, so and the best fit for this is when you have low cardinality, something like a gender order status, day of weeks stuff, and when you don't have a uniform distribution of data, when the dis data distribution is very heavily skewed. And it's, but the, the only problem over here is if your data is changing too much, then you'll have to keep your updating your histograms a lot. But if it's something like this, and if you think that 
okay, it might not change over a period of time, then this is one of the best solutions that you go in for 8.2 for your query performance. Okay, uh, some more advice is when not to, so on, on so if your if your column is a first column in the index, then you don't create histograms on this. And when it is never used in the where clause, if your if your if your column is just a part of the select query, you don't need to create histograms. So these are certain advices that you get if it is possible enough, get a singleton histogram because that's the best fit. Because if you have a equate histogram and if your value is one, then you'll have to scan through that histogram and find out again. And so that's that's something different. Yes. So and uh, if your uh, things are getting updated very frequently, then you would probably not want to create a histogram. Yeah, so I think this was a small topic uh, that I wanted to present, but I can take up questions. Uh, there are blogs that we have written for this feature, so you can go ahead and read uh, the blogs. I would also like to thank uh, my colleague Eric and Austin who have, uh, Eric has developed this feature and Austin has written a lot of blogs about it, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, so I think I have, uh, I'm done with my presentation and I would like to take up any questions that you have related to. Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. It's also possible that you can analyze schema level, not only the table level. Uh, analyzing the schema in the sense you. Yeah, the, the one I saw in the presentation is only on the table. So it's also possible uh, that we can analyze the whole schema. In the schema in the sense you want to analyze all the tables in the schema? Mm, no, uh, I, I don't know. I'm so you're talking about the analyze okay. command that you, okay, let me go there and then probably you can. Creating the histogram, right, on the analyzing. So. This one? Yeah. Okay, what's your question then? Yeah, it's also, is it also possible like in Oracle we can do, in Oracle RDBMS database we can do schema level analyzing histogram here, it's also possible? No, I think it's on columns, ah, only, on. only on columns. And on that column we can, we can definitely define how many percent that we are going to analyze the, to have the statistics. N how many percentage yeah. of data in that column? No, you cannot, you yeah. cannot do that. Only it's, the on it's on the bucket. Uh, it's only say, say, say. So if you have, um, for example, 100 GB of tables. Ah. So, no, 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 this is, this, this is going to help you out. <coughs> okay. So you define how much of MB you want to ah, uh, sample yeah, the data. Yeah, that's the sampling. Yeah. Yes, that's right. the sampling, yeah. So you, you mentioned like say, of course you cannot do analyze on 100 gig of data, right? A full table scan is going to take ages. Yeah. So yeah, so here, uh, this is what you define. So you define like one gig or let's say okay. 20 MB or 50 MB of data you want to analyze, you can do that. Okay. No? Thank no? You so much. Thank you so much and thanks for coming. <laughs>